Hi folks, Richard Millman here for the Millman Experience. A number of you have asked me to give you an explanation of the warm-up that I've designed for squash. And uh, I'm gonna take you through the exercises. Before you start, you should always try and raise your body temperature, either use an elliptical or as a bike as I'm doing here. And obviously before any physical exercise program, you should make sure you've checked with a medical professional. I'm going to try and show you the way I think the exercises should be done. But of course, if you have a personal trainer, these people have been trained to find the form and show you the form of this stuff. So that would be a good idea too. Okay, I'm in a home gym today, but most of you will be on a squash court. Let's say there's two, three or four of you on the court together. We're going to start off at the back of the court. I'm going to do a couple of lengths of just easy stretching. Starting off with high knee stretches. Extend, increase, but don't force. Then when you come back on the second length, do a little bit of inward rotation. That's gonna help you start really loosening up the hips. And the joint that really needs the most work in squash is the hips. So really think about hips before and hips after every workout you do. After we've done that basic stretch to start off with we're going to go back to the back wall and we're going to do four lengths of high knee running so just getting the knees up nice and high and then you'll turn back and all the way back and four lengths of that then next four lengths of high knee skipping try and get that nice high easy bounce coming backwards and forwards really get that nice bounding feeling okay and we're going to do something called deadlift walking I love this exercise, it's a dynamic stretch for the hamstring, but it's also really good for opening up neural pathways for balance and stability. So the exercise goes like this, you find the balance point, really extend your back leg as far as you can, keep the ankle leg straight, then take a good step forwards, really extend out again, get your balance, and again you want to do two lengths of that. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is some running backwards. Now, in squash, we move backwards a lot. Squash players, in my mind, are a higher level of species compared to ordinary human beings. Ordinary human beings, they tend to lean in the direction of movement. If they run forwards, they walk, lean forwards. If they walk backwards, they walk and lean backwards. We don't do that in squash. We always lean towards the ball that we're just coming away from. So when you do backwards running, imagine you just played a little drop shot or a shot at the front of the court, and as you move away, keep your head leaning towards the ball that you just left behind. So let's try and make sure that when you do this backwards running, you stay low, peripherally be aware, so you don't bump into anybody, and Remember, there's a wall behind you. So you're gonna start off by going backwards running, nice big steps, you'll get to the end, and again, staying low, back running, okay? Next, next I'm gonna do four of those, by the way, four lengths of that. Then we're gonna do four lengths of back pedaling, which is almost the same, except teeny weeny little steps. So you'll start from the back wall, and quick little steps as fast as you can. Again, you can see I'm not letting my heels touch the floor, it's all toes, okay? So next, we're gonna do some lateral lunges. You know, keeping the groins fit is really, really important. And when you do these lateral lunges, really important that you keep the anchor foot flat on the floor and no movement in the knee. All right, so we're gonna go from here. I'm gonna take a nice stride to the side and you can see I've kept that flat on the floor so I'm stretching inside there. Then we'll come back and we go the other way and exactly the same thing, keeping that foot flat on the floor, stretching in here. You're gonna do eight in each direction. Next one we're gonna do is called a static Spider-Man. I love this exercise for squash. It really works much of your body. You're gonna take a position almost like a push-up position, except instead of your hands being underneath your shoulders, 
your hands are going to be underneath your sternum okay so this is the position down on the floor in that position and then from here i'm going to get my foot in front of my hand there and then i'm going to go back and i'm going to exchange on the other foot on the other side so that's a static spiderman you're going to do eight in each direction okay next exercise i hate doing this one it's a bit like making my bed in the morning it's got to be done and when i've done it i'm glad i did do it before i do it i'm a little bit tentative but here it is very simply starting from one wall and going up the court there's usually about seven spider-men sorry seven inch worms to a length of the court we're going to do eight so we're going to start here walk the hands out as far as you can do a little sort of push-up movement there then walk your toes all the way up to your hands keeping those legs as straight as you can and then you're going to do another one and another one okay after we've done the inchworms we're going to do crossover lunges and this is another opportunity to really get these hips working so from a standing position you're going to do a nice crossover lunge taking your right foot right across the left foot and then you're going to reach down with your left hand and you're going to reach and touch the outside of your foot and you'll come back again reach across to the other side get down nice and low with the outside of the hand and to the foot okay you're going to do eight each way of those <clears throat> next we're going to imagine we've got a little hurdle either side of us this is another great hip exercise so we're going to take the sole of the foot and bring it right over the top of the hurdle so we're going to reach back over and forwards back over and forwards and again we're just going to do eight in each direction really extending and opening up these hips then we're going to do the same thing backwards so we're going to go forwards back and over the hurdle forwards back and over the hurdle so again we're going to do eight of those in each direction next we mustn't forget the shoulders shoulders and neck really important so we're going to try and keep them nice and loose but without forcing anything so we're going to do 10 forward rotations and gradually extending those shoulders but nothing being forced nice and relaxed and then when you've done 10 of those you're going to go 10 backwards the same deal so if you've done raising the body temperature either on the bike or the elliptical or however you like you could do it in the corner of a locker room if you've got no space just warming up okay then do the routine we've just mentioned if you're getting ready for a match you might want to go and check on the court see what the state of the match before is maybe you come back do a second routine the same maybe you come back you do some ghosting you only need a hallway to do some ghosting and just get your movement going so that you're really getting yourself g'd up and thinking about what you're hoping to achieve in the match maybe thinking about some of the stuff you've been working on return to serve getting 90 degrees moving off the ball all that good stuff but in general that's what i'm trying to do when i'm warming up so i hope that's helpful to you and uh, good luck keep hitting that ball